A man's body ended up on a wastewater treatment plant conveyor belt. Officers found the body this morning. Right now, police say there are no indications of foul play. The Muncie wastewater treatment plant this morning. Police are still trying to figure out if there is anything suspicious about the death. My name is Teresa. My brother, Michael Coates, he was my younger brother. There was eight of us. He was the youngest out of all of us. He wasn't married, he does have one son. He was a very caring person. He was very well liked. I mean, he went down some wrong roads, and but then he got his life back together, and he was spending more time with his son. The choices he made, we, we wasn't around each other a lot. I mean, he would come around my house, but I didn't agree with some of the things he were doing, and some of the people he were hanging out with. And he knew that. He was making changes. I mean, he, he had drugs in his past. He turned to drugs. He made a lot of bad choices. He wasn't in his son's life like he should have been. I've uh, been Michael's brother-in-law for, at the time, would have been 30 years, you know. Uh, I've known him since he was a little kid. A lot of times Michael would come, it was kind of bothering him, the lifestyle he was living. He would just come to us for moral support. One day it just changed and from being around him, I know the signs and I know the changes. I knew he was doing better because he was there and he was spending time with his son where before he was out of his life and you know, I could see the changes in him. He was helping my mom do things around the house, fixing things that she needed, things that he wasn't doing before. So there was a lot of changes that he was making, and I could, I could tell. He, he was a genuine person. Uh, he, he's a good kid. He really thought about things. Uh, he wasn't one to just fly by the seat of his pants. He always thought about what he was doing. Uh, I always liked that about Michael, because he's a smart kid. Drugs really do bad things to people, good people, you know? So, but I miss the old Michael. Because he did his own thing, he just didn't return home. My mom and my brothers on an off girlfriend was the last two people that we know of that seen my brother alive. My mom seen my brother on Sunday, May 19th, and then my mom left. May the 22nd, the police showed up at my mom's work, which I don't live far from there. I was called over there to identify my brother by pictures. I just got out of a meeting and uh, started at my first job, and I got a call from my wife and uh, she was uh, bawling, telling me that I needed to come home, that uh, Michael was the body they found at the wastewater treatment plant. My brother was found at the Muncie Water Waste Treatment Plant. He had washed up through a machine. He had come up and was on the conveyor belt, and the conveyor belt threw him off, and he was found on the ground. It was pretty graphic that uh, they didn't want us to see him and coroner's exact words was, you don't want to see him. Sitting here today, I wished I'd have went because I could have went and, and identified him in person uh, and these guys would have had more closure, at least knowing without a doubt uh, that it was him, you know, so. It could have been through the plant or through a manhole. 
I don't believe that it was through the plant just for what I've seen. I think somebody dropped him in a manhole and he washed up through that way. We was told that they uh, believed that he, his body was actually placed in a manhole uh, along the main sewer run that runs on the south side of Muncie. Uh, there's only about maybe five miles of Maine that his body could have traveled through that was big enough. We have been told that all of the siphons that come out of the river are too small for a body to go through. We were shown the sizes. Uh, it really would have taken a small child, you know, size body to be able to travel through the pipes that siphon out of the river. So that's basically impossible. Michael's cause of death was undetermined. What I was told, there was 10 times the amount of methamphetamine in his system that they've ever seen in a body. But his cause of death was not an overdose. It was undetermined. Everybody we've talked to believes that, uh, and when I say who we've talked to, investigators, believe that somewhere along that main run, somebody put his body into the sewer. And they don't believe he done it himself. Uh, you know, you can go try to lift a manhole cover, try to pick it up standing on your two feet, it's just not gonna happen. They believe somebody had stuck a needle in, his, in him and shot him up to kill him, is what they believe. I've seen the pictures, I've got the reports, and I know the damage to my brother's body. That's what makes me think that he was dropped in manhole because he had a broken neck, he had a broken collarbone, his face was all swelled. I guess there was a lot of damage. Several lacerations all over his body, which if you've seen the machine that he came through, it, it, if, his, if his body would have traveled another seven foot through the machine, it, they, they wouldn't have found him. They had to chewed him up. So, I mean, the machine done a lot of damage to him. We've been told by two, two investigators and the coroner that they, and they've all three said the same thing, they don't believe he done it to himself. They believe somebody done it to him. The water waste treatment plan is a very restricted area. You can't just walk back there. I can tell you by the time we got back to the building where his body was found, we was seen by at least, at least six to eight people. So for him to actually be in the plant, without being seen, it's just not likely. We was told that they tore the machine apart, that his body was found beside. They actually had the conveyor that his body traveled on sitting beside the building where they had taken it apart. So once they found him, the machine was shut down and tore apart for investigation. So, and there was none of his stuff that was found there. Uh, we was told that if uh, any of his clothing items, shoes, cell phone, anything like that, was with him when he was in there, that it would have they would have found it, and they did. They believe he was dead before his neck was broke, his collarbone. Most of most of the damages to his body was done after he had died. He was last seen Sunday morning between 10 and 12 o'clock. That was the last known time that he was seen. His body showed up at the wastewater treatment plant uh, between 7 and 8.30 the next morning, which would be Monday morning, May 20th. His body was found on the 20th. We was notified on the 22nd. I never, ever thought that it would have been my brother. It's not been easy. I mean, there's so much thoughts that go through your head. You know, I'm laying next to her in the middle of the night when she wakes up, you know, and, and uh, can't go back to sleep. There's times that she'll just start crying and, you know, I don't know what's going through her head. I don't know what's triggered her, you know. I know why, but I don't know what's causing it at that moment, you know. Not knowing what happened to him, if he suffered, if he knew what was going on, it's hard. I do want to know what happened. I want to know what happened to my brother. 
who done it and I, I want them to pay for it. They had no right to do whatever they done to my brother. And I think that he deserved to rot in jail for what they did. Michael, can you hear us? Michael, how'd your body end up in the water treatment plant? Were you with friends when you died? Michael, were you murdered? Yes or no? Michael, did you OD? Michael, did you OD? Michael, did you die in the house that your sister said you died in? Was you by yourself? Michael, did your friends kill you? Can you tell us who we need to talk to? They've set him up and they've done him in. And, and, uh, and then they tried to dispose of him and they tried to dispose of him in a way that uh, he wouldn't be found. And uh, I hate to thank God that his body showed up within 24 hours of when he was last seen. So I guarantee they didn't plan on that happening. There was no way they planned on his body showing up that fast. I miss him knocking on my door, asking me, Pick some something to eat. I believe that somebody killed him. I believe that it's going to be more than one person. I have thoughts of who might have done it or who might be involved with doing it. It's pretty sad if, if they're friends with my brother and they would have done it. There is a house that I know that he hung out at. Every time that I would ask where you're at, it always come back to that house. I would believe that they would have had to take my brother in a vehicle and take him to one of them and throw him down in it. When he was found, he only had his boxers. He's missing a hat. He's missing his cell phone. He's missing shirt. Shoes, socks, coat, his ID, none of that's been found. And he would have never left the house without shoes. My brother doesn't go without shoes and socks and he doesn't go without his hat. I know somebody out there knows something and I wish they would come forward and do the right thing. And I hope we find out, uh, you know, somebody had done this to him. Was there any history of mental illness or suicides or anything like that in the past with Michael? No. 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 Muncie used to be a good town. What's happened with Muncie now is drugs just went crazy. But as far as law enforcement, you know, I don't have a whole lot to say. Just because the fact that I feel like they, they just want somebody to come tell them what happened. Well, that's not going to happen. If you're an investigator, you go out and you investigate, not sit and wait behind a desk and hope it falls in your lap. Did you OD? Michael, how'd you die? Michael, did somebody kill you? Yes or no? Michael, were you murdered? Somebody break your neck. Michael, did somebody toss your body down the manhole cover? Yeah. Does your sister know your friend? Did they uh, shoot you up? Okay. 
really fun. It kind of, it sounded like they said, yeah. Was given to us from the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, there's a gentleman over there that's really, really helped us out quite a bit. Uh, he was the one that took us in and actually showed us the machine that uh, Michael's body traveled through. But he provided us with these maps. And on these maps, uh, if you can see, they show how the main lines travel. Uh, on these maps, anything back behind his mom's house or north of his mom's house is not big enough for a human body to travel through. So what he done here is he actually give us sizes, pipe sizes. We've got 18 inches that runs back there. Human body can't travel through an 18 inch pipe. These are diameters. What do you need, something like 24 inches or bigger? Bigger, bigger. 24 inches, you, you, you might get a small human body to go through a 24 inch pipe, uh, but it's not gonna travel. It's gonna, when it comes to a corner or a bend, it's gonna get hung up or debris. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so for a full size human, um, it's going to take probably 40 inches or bigger. That would be big enough for a human body to travel through. And if anybody knows anything about Muncie, this is where the old Kmart South used to sit. And all of these pipes are big enough for a human body to travel through. It goes behind Elm Ridge Cemetery and then goes in along the river to the wastewater treatment plant. And all of them pipes are actually big enough for a for a human body to travel through. They're 42 inches or bigger. We was told that is the only main in Muncie that is big enough for a body to travel through. Any of them on the north side of Muncie are smaller mains. Uh, they're not big enough for a human body to travel through. And have they narrowed anything down as far as which one they believe his body was placed in? They were supposed to walk it, but they said they didn't find anything. They were supposed to walk it, but I can tell you there's places they couldn't even find it. You can't even hardly find them. We, we went back along this lane right here, and you can't even find the ones that's along the field. So if you travel these lines on these maps, does it put you anywhere close to where we think you may have been that day or that night? There's none close to that area. And I don't think it happened at my mom's because I, I went into his room and his bed was completely made like he hadn't even slept in a, the bed that night. Behind Kmart South is not too far from my mom's. It's about, about a mile and a half to two miles. Here's the one that we tried to open. This was the one that was ajar, okay? Uh, it, it looked like it had been ajar for a while. Uh, we, we probably tried this two weeks, two weeks after the fact, probably. when we got this map, at, that we went in and tried to open this. We couldn't even budge it. And plus, that's a fairly but busy road. we didn't road. try to use yeah, it. Yeah, this, this is a main road. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. the, the five minutes we stood there, I'll bet you 50 cars went past us. You know, it's not. But nobody stopped and seen what we were doing. Yeah, nobody, like that. nobody paid no attention. They just yeah, but I mean, if you would have been dragging a body, putting a body down, that somebody would have oh, stopped yeah. or called nine one one. Even in the middle of the night, this there's traffic on this. I can tell you, I plow snow in Muncie. This road has traffic on it all the time. From what we was told, these coming this way mm -hmm. was too small. Remember the one that come up out of the ground? It's only about this big around. Okay, not big enough for a human body to travel through. I think that's what would be considered an 18 inch or 24 inch main, you know. So it would have been this one right here. And his body was found right there. Okay. This is where he was found. It, what it does is it's a conveyor. You can see the belt right here. See the it's kind of like a, a metal belt mm -hmm. and his body would have traveled up underneath of this metal cover and then came up over the guard or the rail right here and was laying right here on the ground so what mm -hmm. happened is the machine 
came, brought him up, and probably when it hit that hood right there, it flopped him over. So that's where I think a lot of the damage to his body came from. And then I believe that uh, it, it looked like he probably made it up underneath that metal hood, and it was open just like it is right there. And I think what happened is when it hit the top hood, it flipped it over and dropped him out of there. If he would have went any further, you see that dumpster behind mm -hmm. it? At, at the top of that, he would have went into a grinder and it ground him up and it would just been a bloody mess. If he would have went up and over the conveyor to the other side, it would have shredded him. Yeah, it would If it would have took him in instead of dropping him off, it would have shredded found him into the basket. They is all they'd have found. Because they have... I mean, it, it would have been a bloody mess. Because I mean, it, it would have ground him into There's nothing. a better picture of the machine. Okay there's no way you could get in there without being seen, you know. So what's this other stuff? This is the coroner's yeah, report. Yeah, that's the coroner's report. I don't care if you look at it. The cause of manner of death depends largely on the circumstances, and it says the possibilities include the following. If he had entered the water pool on his own under the influence of drugs, then the cause of death would be a drowning. And the second would be if he was placed in a pool by an individual or individuals after his death, the cause of death would most likely be drug intoxication, and the manner of death would be classified as an accident. If he was placed by the pool prior to his death, the cause of death would be drowning, which would often have no signs for the autopsy, and the manner of death would be considered homicide. It says some injuries appearing post-mortem cannot be ruled out as a contributing factor. When they found him, he had no water in his lungs. That's, well, that's what they told us. Yeah. His exact words was, is we don't believe that he done it to himself. We believe somebody put him there. That's exactly what he told me face to face. I mean, nobody goes through this amount of work to commit suicide. Right. But I'm going to tell you right now, from knowing Michael and seeing him prior, uh, right before this happened, uh, not likely. Not likely. Kind of was getting scared because he was getting a target on his back because he was throwing out another name. And this guy is supposed to be. And supposed to be a, a drug dealer. A bad guy, and a really bad guy. And him and throwing his name out there. And I think that they were afraid for their lives because of him. So they were trying to. They were throwing his name out there, and he was getting scared. They made him help dispose of my brother's body. That's what I was told. And there's this <laughs> that was supposed to be the one that done it, but it, that's just some of what I was told. This Fergie guy is supposed to be a friend of his. Yeah. He's supposed to be a close friend. All my messages going back, looking through them, and I'm asking my brother, where are you at? That's where he was, not far from your house. Say three local storm drains are large enough to carry a human body into the plant. Investigators are also looking at whether the man had been inside the plant before his death. This is the water treatment plant he was found in, and they said that there was no way for his body to go from the river into the facility. Is it possible somebody murdered him and threw his body in the manhole? I guess we'll run a session here and see what we get. We're attempting to communicate with Michael Coates or any spirits that know what happened to Michael Coates. His body was discovered at this water treatment plant. Michael, can you hear us? Michael, how did your body end up in the water treatment plant? Michael, did you commit suicide? Michael, were you murdered? Michael, did you meet somebody out here? There's like a male voice that comes across. Michael, who did you meet out here? Followed by something. Michael, did somebody murder you? Oh.
Michael, if you were murdered, give us the name of the person or persons that hurt you. We need a first and last name. Did you know the people that hurt you? Michael Milne. That's pretty clear. Michael, are they related to you? Michael, what did they do with your body after they murdered you? Michael, were you dead before you went into the water treatment plant? I don't know. I don't know. Were you stabbed? Michael, did you OD? Michael, right now your family believes that you may have been murdered. Were you murdered, yes or no? I think we can go down to the water treatment plant and get some shots. Yeah, let's go because this car is coming back here. See, because I think this manhole cover right here would be too, because this street's so busy. I didn't even notice that one. It's not always busy. Let's walk down there. I mean, you look at this place. I mean, it's got a huge fence around it, so how in the hell would he end up? And we know for sure this water treatment plant doesn't suck water out of the White River. I think the key is to figure out the options of a body ending up in the... If he was put down a manhole cover, a manhole, clearly he didn't do that himself. If his body was just floating in the river, is it possible that he was sucked into... I bet these are all discharged out into the river. There's no way you're going to pull up a manhole cover by yourself. I think that's kind of our next option is reach out to the sister, see if she's willing to talk to us, and then find out from somebody that works here how in the hell does a body end up? There's probably tunnels throughout town that people go in. You know what I'm saying? Like big water tunnels. I mean, it's possible his body came through here, and there might be several different ways water enters the plant. I would think just one specific area would be you'd overwhelm. Because he could have been killed somewhere else and his body put in the sewer system and ended up here. Somebody that, to me, it would have had to have been somebody that was familiar with the procedure. And that's the thing, they could have murdered him, threw him in a manhole just to get rid of the body and just so they weren't probably, maybe not even expecting his body to show up at the water treatment plant. I'd like to find out where he lived, where he was last seen. Maybe that area makes more sense as far as the body being dumped. Michael, we're down here by the water treatment plant right next to the White River. Michael, was your death an accident? Did you die in this area? Definitely getting better responses down here. Michael, were you down inside one of the tunnel systems? Where were you when you died here in town? Michael, we need to know for sure, was your death an accident? Michael, if somebody killed you, I need to know their first and last name. Michael, was it a man or a woman who murdered you? Michael, how did you die?
Michael, did this have anything to do with drugs? I mean, it sounded like we were getting better responses right here versus up by the cemetery. I think like you said, with the energy from the water and the water treatment plant, maybe his connection's a little bit stronger. Was your girlfriend or a girl that you were with, did they have anything to do with this? Michael Coates was last seen on Sunday, May 19th at his home in Muncie. The next day, workers found his body inside the Muncie Wastewater Treatment Plant. Can you give me the first and last name of these people? Sounds like somebody's trying to come through, but... Yeah. Good night. Do that. Mm -hmm. Michael, who was your friend that went into the sewer system with you?